Hi, this is Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems. Today I'm going to show you a more advanced tracking challenge, rotoscoping a slow pan and then preparing roto elements for stereo conversion. Steve Wright's 2D to 3D tutorial on our webpage is a good place to start your education on using our Mocha products within your own stereo pipeline. This tutorial I'm about to show you is about complex, multi-layer rotoscoping dealing with organic shapes that you might not think of as planar and preparing mats for 2D to 3D conversion. I'm going to start by coming in here and starting to draw some rough shapes around the teacup, cutting out the handle for the teacup so that I don't that doesn't mess up my tracking information, tracking the back of the computer screen, and this sugar packet container over here. Alright, so turning auto channel on, I'm going to crank my minimum pixel values up, and because the perspective is shifting, I'm going to click perspective on and track forward. Okay, so I've just tracked through. And to check, I'm going to take my surface tool and I'm going to align it to the back of this very obvious plane so I can check to see if it's lining up or sliding off. If it's lining up, I know my roto is going to stick just fine. I'm going to use these as a rough track to link all the roto on my table to. I'm going to full screen mode. I'm going to quickly take my X-spline tool and make some more accurate roto splines around this teacup, making sure that I add to the X-spline to remove the inside of the handle. And then I'm going to start moving on to my roto shapes of the table. You can see that I've linked that to the track. I'm checking my mat and adjusting accordingly. I'm going to do the same thing over here for the sugar packet and for the laptop, and very quickly go through the rest of the objects on the table. And I'm linking them all to the rough track that I had done originally. The process is extremely streamlined to save artists like you precious production time. I'm going to pan out here so you can see what's going on, and I'm going to start tracking this back wall. It's very important to make sure that we pay attention to the planar surface of the back wall. I'm grabbing as much of the back wall as possible because I want to make sure that the entire planar surface uh, moves correctly so that I can attach the rest of the shapes that I need to attach to it. When rotoing the wall, remember that Mocha is a planar tracker, and the reflections are actually representing movement from another plane. So we will use Mocha shapes to avoid those reflections and focus on the pixels that are all on the same plane. Tracking through very quickly. So I'm going to very quickly go through and I'm going to lock my layers so that I don't destroy the data that I've already put down. I just do that by clicking on the little lock icon next to the layers themselves. I'm going to go back to full screen, making sure that I save my project. You want to make sure that you save in increments, so you want to make sure that you save multiple versions of your files, and you want to make sure that you do that often. In case something corrupts, you want to have a backup. You don't want to lose hours and hours of work, just like any other compositing program. When using X-Blinds, remember that it's like a pulley. Pull for a corner, relax for a curve. All right, so here I've made two wall shapes, and I'm attaching to them to my wall or rough track. You can see they're sticking on exactly how they need to stick on. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to very quickly roto the rest of this scene on this back wall so that you can uh, so that we can move on with this demo. Moving into the background back here to get what's behind her. It's moving the same as the wall, or moving relative to the wall, so I'm going to keep that. These are not moving relative to the wall, but they're moving close enough. So I'm going to quickly trace these shapes of the Tabasco sauce and the ketchup. And I'm going to hand animate them a little bit, but I don't really need that many splines in order to get them looking correct. I only need about two or three keyframes. For the foreground guy's shoulder, I'm just going to hand animate that very quickly. It's rough, so as you just would apply a feathered edge and it would be fine. It's important to include shapes of things that are beyond a window, um, just so that you have some internal depth. So I'm quickly going to roto that bench and move on to the little girl's head. So for organic shapes like this, this is where Mocha really starts to shine um, for putting down layers and layers very quickly for stereo conversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly track the front plane of her face, and I'm going to link a lot of other roto shapes to it. I'll save my project, and I'm going to start drawing the major shapes that build up her face. 
They can be kind of rough, but they need to be decently accurate. I recommend smoothing out your shapes. It's essentially like drawing. You're going to build up shapes like you would if you were doing a drawing. So you have the same sunglasses shape that you would make for somebody's eyes. You know, the general nose shape. Come in and make a mouth shape. For eyeballs, you have to bring the eyeballs a little out of the eye socket because that's the way the contours go. So you would need to push the eye sockets back with the sunglasses shape and pull the shapes back out with the eyeball shape. This is important because you often need layers of roto to build up your depth mat. Using screen, multiply, darken, and lighten, you can very quickly build up your black and white depth mat values and save yourself loads of production time. The less time you spend on roto and the more time you spend tweaking your depth mat, the better. Something to keep in mind about Mocha's planar tracker is its unique layering system in the way that your Mocha shapes are looking at the data it's tracking. The ability to use shapes when tracking search areas allows the tracker to focus on planar pixel patterns rather than the unreliable point data that other programs use. Point data has a harder time locking on when the frame has motion blur, snow, fog, smoke, or other debris and noise, or partial occlusion. Now I'm moving on to the mouth. The mouth I'm going to track separately. I'm actually not going to link it to the face plane because then it will sort of open as her mouth opens and the face plane doesn't do that. I'm going to go in here and correct the roto shapes. Add an ear. I'm going to add the main bulk shape of her head and start adjusting my roto shapes and linking them to the face track. Remember to save as you go, inversions. I'm going to move on to the hair. I'm going to very quickly draw a rough shape outside the outside edge of the hair, and I'm going to track that. I'm going to call it hair rough track. Now the reason I do this is because you're not always going to get the best data by tracking the whole object. Sometimes the best data is from the edge of the object, or from a plane on the surface of the object. That's why I link to a track as opposed to just doing the roto shape, tracking, and then adjusting my keyframes from there. When you link to a rough track, it's literally a rough shape. You're just telling the you're telling Mocha that you would like for it to look at this section as it tracks. Your roto shapes are separate from that, and your roto shapes just define the data that you're bringing into a compositing program. It's really important to understand that the surface data is not the same as the roto spline. So as you move your roto spline, you are not animating the planar track. However, you can adjust the planar track manually by adjusting the surface. So I'm going to come in here on my rough track a portion of her chest so that I can start attaching the roto on her body to that. I quickly use my grid to check the planar track. And I move on to creating a new roto shape for her neck and linking that to the track. So her neck I'm going to link to the chest track down here and link to track. It does a pretty good job. And so I'm only going to have to add a couple of keyframes. Same thing for the body. I'm going to come in here and do her body and her shoulders. And I'm going to link it to the chest track. And I actually can see that that's not going to work, so I have to come in here and find a different thing to link them to. So I'm going to make a new rough track of various points on her blouse. I'm going to call it body rough track. And I'm going to track through my scene. It's important to pay attention to the best shapes to link the track to. Now I'm going to link the shoulders and body to that track. And you can see that that does a much better job when we actually get it on there. So now I only have a couple of keyframes to clean up. So for rotoscoping backgrounds and geometric shapes, our keys are almost none. But for organic shapes, we're saving you lots of work. However, there's still manual keys that need to be done to get those roto shapes finaled. So I'm linking both her arms to the body rough track. And I'm very quickly going to save. And I'm going to come in and make a new track for her forearm. Track that through. And just like I've done with everything else, I'm going to turn that off and lock it. I'm going to come in and make my new roto shapes for my forearm. My much more detailed roto spline. I always use X splines because X splines scale with our planar tracker in a much more uniform way.
Um, some people prefer beast blinds, but we, we recommend that you use X blinds because of the way they work with our planar tracker. So I'm coming in here and I'm adjusting, uh, making a new uh, track for her hand because her hand moves separate from her forearm. So I'm going to track that through. And just like I've done with every other part of the shot, I'm going to come in and make my more fine roto shapes around her hand. You can just change the spline that you used to track as your roto spline and adjust that and add points, but it's messy and destructive, and we don't recommend it. All right, so I'm going to finish adjusting this and wrap up my hand roto. And do the same thing for her fingers. I'm renaming the layer and linking it to my hand track. And I can see that that doesn't give me the result that I'd like, so I need to make a new track. So I track it through, adjust the roto. And again, remember, as I make the roto, I'm not, I'm not messing with the tracking data. I'm going to link this new finger to the previous track that I made. And adjust the roto. And now I'm going to move on to the pinky finger. I'm going to make a really rough track of it because it's moving separately than those other two fingers. Name it pinky rough track. Lock it. Turn it off so it's not in my way, visually. I'm going to make my new finer roto shapes and link them to that track. I'm just going to come in and hand animate what I have to animate. So I've only done about five, five keyframes and I'm done. So Mocha is not meant to do all of the work for you. It's meant to get rid of most of the work for you. You still need an artist to do the shot and to think about how the keyframes go. Think about the best way to execute the shot. You need a mat for every element in stereo because you use these objects to generate your depth cues within the shot. The goal is to create depth, and the only way to do that is to overlap elements and designate clear foreground and background objects. So hopefully you have a better understanding of how to track planar surfaces and complex organic surfaces. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about how to export these to Nuke and After Effects. So you go to export shape data, you make sure you have selected all visible layers or whatever layer that you want to export, copy to clipboard and open up, in this example, Nuke. You paste it in and it pastes in as a roto paint node. You can see you have all your splines in Nuke ready to use. For After Effects it's the same thing. Copy all the shapes of the clipboard, go to After Effects. In your composite, select a layer, paste Mocha Mask onto that layer. You can see that all your splines are in your comp ready to use. Thanks for watching. This has been Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems.